Hey y'all, welcome back to the farm. My name's Susie and I'm really glad you're joining me here on my channel today where I like to do a lot of DIY for decorating my home as well as upcycling thrifted finds for resale. If that's the kind of content you enjoy, I would be honored if you would subscribe to my channel and come back. In today's video, I'm gonna be decorating my homemade mantle for spring. I'm so excited and really have spring fever. So let's go ahead and get started. I have had this old wood window pane for many years. I've painted it a time or two. The last time I painted it, I did this green color and this was before I knew anything about apothecary and did a dark wax over it. I wanna make this look like it has been painted a hundred years ago. So I'm gonna do some milk paint and I am just mixing half and half the powder milk paint powder with hot water giving it a good stir and then i let it sit for an hour or so while i did some other things and i'm just gonna slap this paint on here there is nothing perfect about milk paint you just get it on there and you hope that it does what you want it to do in my experience which is very little milk paint is very unpredictable i did everything exactly like it said and i really wanted a lot of chipping i did not use any extra bond and i dried it with the heat gun and i still did not get the chipping that i wanted so i ended up just sanding it down really well I don't understand because I did a frame with the same paint. I had a little bit left over, so I did a frame and it chipped perfectly. So something about that frame, and like I said, milk paint is extremely unpredictable, but still this window looks so good. And just like I wanted it to turn out, minus the chipping, I just sanded it to give it the age and it looks like it was painted 100 years ago. I didn't hang it on the mantle, I just leaned it. Um, I didn't wanna put another screw in the wall and I have one there for um, Jesse's portrait that hangs most of the time. Next, I have this old cabinet door and when we remodeled our kitchen, uh, we lost some cabinets due to the refrigerator being larger and putting in a dishwasher. So I used my Durham's water putty and filled in all of the holes in the cabinet and then sanded it down really smooth. And I'm going to give it a couple of coats of um, drop cloth by Dixie Bell on the front and the back. And then I'm going to sand it smooth again, not distressing, just taking out any brush strokes and seal it really good with a coat of polycrylic. The whole inspiration for my spring mantle is this IOD brocant bird transfer. I've seen it so many times and I have just been waiting for the right moment to use it. And this mantle is it. I am using a lot of the same colors. The blue just really spoke to me and the French country vibes are coming hard on this mantle. So these transfers are so easy, especially if you're just doing it on a painted surface and it's sealed. You just rub it with the tool that it comes with until it releases and you can tell when it releases. And then once it releases, you want to uh, burnish it with the uh, backing really well. Um, the birds by themselves were absolutely gorgeous on this, but I wanted to put a little wording as well. So this is in that same set and you can use pieces of this and pieces of that. So I just put a little bit of wording above the birds and I just love how this cabinet door turned out. I'm not gonna hang it on anything on this mantle, but I will put a hanging hook on the back so it can easily be hung up on the wall as art anywhere in the house as well. I really wanted a moss wreath and I didn't have one. So I'm just gonna be using this dollar store reindeer moss. Something about the green moss just screams spring to me. So I'm gonna be really careful, hopefully not burn 
my fingers to death with this hot glue and I know that I'm not going to have enough to cover the back so for now I'm just doing all the way around the sides and the top. You won't be able to tell once it's hung so I'm just going to get all this moss glued on here. It's really messy um, but in the end I think I got it stuck on here really well so maybe it will not be making a mess all over the floor in the living room. I do love how this moss wreath turned out. I wouldn't mind having one a little bit bigger, but for now, this looks so good up on the window on my mantle. I knew that I wanted to make some of the spindle carrots and I had these from an old bed and I had already used some of them to make some riser feet. So these were already the exact perfect size. I did not even have to cut them down. The only orange paint that I had was just some Dollar Tree acrylic paint. So I had to do three or four or five coats to get these covered. I just slapped it on there and dried it in between with the heat gun and I eventually got them covered like I wanted and I really they were just too orange for me so I took a little bit of white chalk paint and just dry brushed it on them until I got the look that I was going for. Once I got the color like I wanted, I just took some of these greenery and cut off some little things and glued them down inside the hole with some Gorilla Glue. And then I had an old lace tablecloth that I've been using pieces of here and there and I just tore it, tied it around the carrots to make a little bundle. And just to give it a little bit more stability, I put some twine around it as well. Y'all remember the clay pots I got at the thrift store a while back? I am going to be using three of those on the mantle today. I'm putting this uh, vintage duck egg from Dixie Belle on them. It's only going to take one coat and it covers really well. And then, like I said, I'm getting major French country vibes for my mantle. And I found these cute little graphics on the Graphics Fairy Dot com. I just printed them out on printer paper, cut them out, and I'm going to Mod Podge them on all three of my little clay pots. Once the Mod Podge has dry, I'm going to be giving these some white wax. 
I just mixed some clear wax with some white paint. I couldn't find any white wax that I liked that wasn't yellowy. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit on, let it sit there a minute, and then wipe it back off, putting it on the label too. And I'm going to show you a close-up of how these look, one with wax and one without, so you can see the difference in the detail and how much better it makes it look. Then me and Mason are going to put these little succulent picks in here. I have a few from Walmart, and I have some from Dollar Tree last year that I had stuck in things. And then this year, they have these little bitty ones in these cute little pots. So I'm going to be using some of those as well. I also had some of this floral foam that was like the, the long cylinders and I had cut some off for a different project and I'll be daggum if they didn't fit right in these clay pots perfectly. I'm just going to hot glue some Spanish moss in the base of these. I was not successful this time in not burning my finger. See if you can spot where I burnt my pinky. I wanted to make a little banner for the mantle and I had found this old hymn book that was really falling apart at the thrift store. So I just took out six pages and I'm going to stamp the word spring with the IOD type setting stamps. I use these stamps for so many different things. There is all the capital letters and all the lowercase letters. So it's just there's so many things you can do with them. I'm just going to fold these over a piece of twine or yarn, and I have some little bitty clothespins that I kind of stained with some antiquing wax. I'm going to cut out the bottoms to make it like a banner, and that's all there was to it. This was the easiest craft, and it has such a big impact on the spring mantle.
I have one last little project for the mantle. Mom found this beautiful fabric for a couple of bucks at a yard sale, and she made some pocket pillow covers, four of them. I'm going to be using one, and I'm going to stamp the farm animal IOD stamp, and then just put the French word for sheep on here. And that is it. We're just going to stamp that on this case. I have not sealed in the ink yet. If you have any advice for how to seal ink in on fabric, please let me know in the comments below. But this little pillowcase looks so cute and I love how it turned out. I have just a few finishing touches to add and I'm going to move things around a hundred times like I always do before I show you guys the final reveal of my spring fireplace mantle. cute are these little embroidery egg covers? My husband's Mima made them for all the kids growing up and there's still several of them around here and I just picked out a few with the colors that I love and I just think they are so cute. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of my mantle makeover and I hope that this inspires you and gives you spring fever and gets you to decorating. I appreciate you guys so much watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to come back and see what's happening here on the farm. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you again the next time.